Hi everybody, Rad Mom here. Welcome or welcome back to the garden, my happy place to talk about scary things. On today's installment, we have how internalized misogyny corrupts feminism in real time. Rebecca Watson just put out this video this morning with this title, Transphobes are coming for us all. And I just couldn't help myself but watch that. Obviously, obviously. You got me, Becca. You got me. I find her extremely annoying. And like, if anybody is a liberal grifter, it's this lady, right? The skeptic. Oi. But I digress. She's absolutely dead set on this whole trans narrative, despite supposedly being a skeptic, which to my mind makes her pretty much a hypocrite right up front. Unfortunately, that doesn't make her wrong all the time, and I think she might actually be onto something here. Rebecca's going to demonstrate for us why exactly it is I don't bandwagon stuff. Exactly why I don't jump on every hot news story with my hot take. Algerian boxer Aman Khalif beat the ever-loving snot out of her opponent, Angela Carini of Italy, in the second round of the Olympics uh, of their particular weight class. Rowling, along with other internet doctors like Logan Paul and Donald Trump. That's some cute force teaming there, Becca. I'm sorry. J.K. Rowling's in the same category as Logan Paul and Donald Trump. Do those two even belong in the same category? Like, that's painting with an awfully broad brush. Decided Khalif is actually a trans woman, meaning they think she must have been assigned male at birth. Let's be clear, that is absolutely 100% not true. Khalif was assigned female at birth. She was raised as a girl, for which there are many photos, as well as her own father's testimony. She is a woman today. Whoops. Whoops. Yeah. Um... Y'all got this one wrong. And accordingly, female is the designation on her passport, which is what the Olympics uses to determine gender. But like, I get it. When you've been primed to see men and women sports, you'll be more prone to looking for them. At this point, it's fairly standard, right? And not for nothing, but in Algeria, it is illegal to be openly lesbian, gay, or transgender. There is no gender-affirming care. There are no surgeries. There is no changing your listed sex on government documents. LGBTQ people not only have no rights there, but are actively hated. So to me, that is pretty conclusive. But the fear that threats to women's rights and spaces has generated is short-circuiting our rational minds and allowing our unconscious biases to run the day. That tells us two things. First, if Khalif was a trans woman, we would definitely know it. And second, J.K. Rowling and her army of turfs have put this woman's life at risk. And why? Not because of her chromosomes, which we don't know. Not because of her hormone balance, ditto. Not because she tried to groom a minor or molest someone in a public restroom or whatever else transphobes pretend to care about. Pretend to care about. Yeah, you just love this gotcha, don't you? You love this one time. This one time. I think it's so fascinating because wouldn't you know it, our unconscious biases involve a lot of misogyny. We all need to grapple with our ideas of what women are supposed to look like and how they are shaped by culture and media. This would probably be internalized misogyny 101, right? Simply, they're targeting her simply because she was too good at her sport. Because when her opponent dropped her hands, Khalif punched her in the face like she was taught. So yeah, this snap to judgment is not great. But I get it. Nobody would have been so worried about men in women's boxing if there hadn't already been a man in women's boxing. And many of these same women protested that. But nobody cared then. The confusion was allowed to continue. The fear of the erosion of women's cultural status allowed to grow. How were these women supposed to know anyone would care this time? Only reason anybody cares this time is because they're wrong. It's an opportunity to shit on feminists, which is just one of our favorite cultural pastimes. It's an opportunity to shit on anyone who has spoken out against this astroturf civil rights movement for a group of people who are figments of their own imaginations. Last year, the International Boxing Association tested just four out of hundreds of athletes competing for them and ended up banning two of them from their championship. 
Khalif and Lin Yutin of Taiwan. They did not explain why they banned those two women. Not only has the IBC been confusing and opaque on this particular issue, but they've been horrible for many years now. Many people suspect them of just being another arm of the Kremlin. Which is super icky and questionable, but I love how we're sourcing from Wikipedia again. Guys, I thought we all agreed a long time ago not to rely on Wikipedia for stuff which is why the Olympics permanently banned them last year. They are the first professional sports organization to earn that particular distinction. Which, again, is pretty conclusive for me, personally. At least in this particular case. This one's not a man, you guys. This one's not. There have been men in women's boxing. There are men in women's sports. And the only reason that this one is getting the level of attention that it is is because the feminists just happen to be wrong this time. She is a cis woman who is being attacked for being too good at her job. J.K. Rowling and her minions have done exactly what advocates for trans rights have said that they would do for many years now. Yeah, paranoia is paranoid, but that does not mean they aren't out to get you, does it? Many women have been put on high alert by the threats to our rights and personal safety, not to mention identity, posed by the trans movement. To say that scared people behave irrationally and therefore what they fear does not exist is some grade A victim blaming there, Becca. They have weaponized their transphobia and used it against all women. This is the final and inevitable result of transphobia, the policing of all women's appearance, of all women's behavior, of all women's success. I know that in the past I've focused on the bad science transphobes use, like in my most re recent video about the CAST report, but the fact of the matter is that this is not a scientific discussion. Thank you for admitting that. It's not a scientific discussion, is it? Because there's no way to scientifically prove that anybody is in the wrong body. I'm pretty sure that's materially impossible. This is a cultural discussion. This is a political discussion. And, and the people who insist that anybody is in the wrong body seem to have this tunnel vision, this religious level of conviction on this thing that relies on the stereotypes which you so claim to decry. They have started with their conclusion that trans people are immoral monsters. No, they think they're terrifically confused human beings. You have started with the idea that trans people are valid and refuse to acknowledge the fact that being in the wrong body is physically, materially impossible. They then backtrack from there until they reach a point where cis women like J.K. Rowling, presumably feminists who in any other case might argue that women should be free from traditional gender roles in order to be whoever they want to be, are attacking other cis women for being too masculine, for stepping outside of those traditional gender roles. This is what I'm talking about. This is your internalized misogyny showing because you're rushing to judgment because everybody is on a high alert right now. Yes, I relate to all of this as a woman who has veered far outside of acceptable gender norms, who knows that she would eventually be put up against the wall in turf Gilead. Yeah, right, because the people willing to go to bat for women's rights are the fascists. The idea that trans-exclusionary radical feminists would be the one to institute a theocratical, patriarchal, forced birth regime is so ridiculous. I thought all radical feminists hated men. Y'all can't have it both ways. But preceding me will surely be millions of non-white and homosexual women thanks to Western society's standard vision of femininity, pale, delicate features, blonde, blue-eyed, thin, heterosexual. Because the people insisting men can't be women are the ones who are imposing stereotypical gender norms. The only way a man can pass as a woman is by adhering to stereotypical gender norms, Becca. We identify traits found more often in white straight women as feminine and traits found more often in women of color and homosexual women as masculine. Which I actually would love to question that. I hate that shit. Why exactly is the willowy white woman the most feminine woman on the planet? I don't think that's fair and I wish we could talk about that. But then we have to roll trans women into the conversation, which really just kind of blows everything else out of the water, doesn't it? I strongly feel not only that I should focus on the science, but that we in general should protect trans lives regardless of any benefit that it may have for me, a cis woman. We should just like protect human lives regardless of any benefit it has for any of the rest of us. Look at her virtue signal here. Look at her just flashing her giant virtue signal here. Rebecca, it's so disgusting.
But I know that unfortunately there are too many people out there who simply will not care about an issue unless it affects them directly or affects someone that they care about. The erosion of sex-based rights amounts to the erosion of boundaries in society, which is a disservice to women everywhere. So know this, witch hunts don't just kill witches. Oh, why do y'all always have to come back to this metaphor? I mean, they don't kill any witches. Witches don't exist. You take my point, a witch hunt is a witch hunt because it finds witches wherever it looks. Paranoia is going to be paranoid, but women have reason to be frightened. And the only thing I can think is that you're willfully ignoring all this shit because it's making you a lot of money. Because of transphobes, cis women are going to be harassed, arrested, killed by their authoritarian governments for being too masculine. This is amazing to suggest that feminists on Twitter set the agenda for anything. What amazing fear-mongering this is. This ironically is exactly what you're accusing transphobes of. Female athletes and other professionals are going to be pushed out of their sports, their jobs, their hobbies, just for being too good at them. And the only reason that this level of scrutiny is being levied at anyone is because somebody decided it'd be a good idea to let men into women's sports in the first place. Little girls are going to have their genitals checked by security guards before they can enter the bathroom just because they cut their hair short. Based on what the fuck are you saying that? Really, like how much are you getting paid to manufacture this disgusting fear mongering, Rebecca? Women everywhere will go through life knowing that if they do not conform to society's expectations of them as women, they will not be safe. And that is unacceptable. This is our present rape culture world that we all were having a conversation about before everybody got caught up in trans rights or before trans rights took over everything else, before feminism became for trans women too. So now all of a sudden we're not talking about the fact that even if you do adhere to societal beauty standards and whatever, you're still not safe as a woman in the world. We're not talking about that anymore. Just because some people's unconscious biases are showing through because they are terrified does not mean anyone is in the wrong body somehow. Way too many people have been hypnotized and captured by this idea that some women are actually men. Or vice versa. It's very distracting from the whole materialist argument of how do we navigate this world together. So if you made it this far, please, please do subscribe to the channel so that we can all work together to bring feminism back into the real world. Because as you can see, we desperately need it. Come back at the top of the hour for the live stream where we always keep it lively. And next Monday at 11 for a new video. And I will see you guys then. Okay, thanks. Bye.